Amen. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Happy Sabbath. All right. Shall we begin with the word of silent prayer? All right, this Sabbath we'll be going over a uh, few things, few things that we already know, and just look at it in this new light. And as the Sabbath school questions and comments are welcomed, and um, start with Romans chapter one, chapter one, verse sixteen, and it says, "For I am not ashamed of the what gospel of Christ, for it is the." power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from face of faith as it is written the just shall live by faith so Paul in Romans is clearly telling us that the power um the gospel is what the power of God okay 1SM 245 paragraph 2 it says the gospel is the power of God and wisdom of God the capital of Christ on earth revealed divinity and the gospel, which, 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 amen, is, is, is to be the study of, of his human, um, of his human heritage. Um, okay, I'll just stop there. So, the gospel is the power and the wisdom of God. So now we will see when 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 Christ gives this gives the, this power more in in more of a full fashion. It says near the close of the second angel's message I saw a great light from heaven shining 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 upon the people of God. The rays of this light seemed bright as the sun and I heard voices of angels crying behold the bridegroom cometh go ye out to meet him. This was the what the midnight cry which was to give power to the second angel's message. So this power of God is given more fully the men I cry. And the reason why I'm saying more fully is because in Matthew 10, Christ gives what? Power. And this is when they go out on their first um, tour, basically. Okay. Jump down, jump down to the next bold in early writings 2.38, paragraph 2 says this work did not stand in the wisdom and learning of man but in the power of God and and his saints and his excuse me and his saints who who heard heard the cry could not resist it so she just told us that the pop, the gospel in 1SM she says the gospel is the power of God and the wisdom of God now she tells us in early writings that the midnight cry when this cry goes forth it stands not in the wisdom and learning of men but in the power of God so, so this gospel now is given onto and yeah, and we know it's to the Jew first. This is the line for the church, and after it goes down to the to the world. <clears throat> so now, so now we'll look at a class that who rejects this this power here. It says this this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of of their own selves. And what else? Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. So we're going to see all these traits at, at, at this point because this is the last day more so. This is the final test, the last test. So in these last days, you shall see all these traitors, truth breakers, heady, high minded. But the point I want to bring forth is in verse five, having a form of what godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. So men will come here, have this form of godliness and <clears throat> denying this power. 
denying this last message that is given so that all men might might not um, fall. Verse seven, ever learning and never able to come. Come to the knowledge of the truth. And I'm going to put forth now that the knowledge of the truth is this power of God is this last message. The midnight cry message. That is this knowledge of truth. Verse 8. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds. Amen. Concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further. For their folly shall be manifest unto all men as theirs also was. So Janus and Jambres, we know. Um, we have these three plagues. One, two, three, and then they come up to this to this point here it's fearing on God and their folly is manifested and now Paul is speaking about a second class who now when they come to the end but ah, speak about for the group of the shepherds oh, one second at the ninth hour their folly shall be manifested as well just as Janice and Jambres folly was manifested. <clears throat> so this group where their folly is manifested are those who who come from this side of of the the um the, the truth. They come here and they're offended and they turn so they have this form, they have this form, but they're denying the power, denying the message, denying the birth that comes here at the midnight cry. Okay, Matthew 23, verse 27 to 29. May I have a reader for these texts, please? Okay, so these 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 are the men that have have the form, but they're denying the power because because outwardly they look correct and and right, but they don't don't have this message because they have rejected this message, and this is Christ. Um, he is showing men that 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 they are wrong and is showing them that that they have this form but they're but they're denying the power. So they look they look as Jews but they're truly not Jews. There it is. They are wolves in sheep's clothing. Okay. First uh actually we'll skip they go to Hebrews ten verse twenty six and twenty seven. For for if we sin how? Willfully after that we have received 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 the knowledge of the truth, there there remaineth no no more sacrifice for sin, but a certain fearful looking for of of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall which shall devour the adversaries. So after you come, come come to the knowledge of the truth here. There remaineth no sacrifice for sin. Go ahead. Okay, amen, yes. Yeah, begin at, yeah, he, he shows, he shows them all, yeah, all the, um, I forgot how, amen, yeah, show them all things, all things concerning himself. And we know, for you to, um, to be with Christ, to flee, you must, you must be ignorant of this sin. But now when this sin comes to your mind, you have to put it away. But if you sin willfully after the knowledge of truth comes, there's no one sacrifice for sin. Okay. But a fearful looking for judgment and speaking about 
the end, the shut door. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4 to um, four to 8. May I have a reader for that, please? Amen. For so it says, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened. So so they have been in this truth, but now they, they turn away. And it says, and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. And have and have excuse me. And have Amen. The good good word of God and the powers of the world to come. They shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance. See him seeing they what crucify amen so they put christ upon the cross so they reject this knowledge of truth the power of god so they crucify christ so now when they do this they there's no more sacrifice for sin for these men they were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and say that this um Okay, I'll put partakers of the they have been partakers of the Holy Ghost. Because as we said in Matthew 10, Christ comes down. No, Christ, excuse me, gives them power to go on their first missionary tour. And those who have have been um have have received the Holy Ghost here. They come here and they reject, reject this first birth. This, this partake of the Holy Ghost. When you partake of the Holy Ghost, excuse me, when you're receiving this first birth, we know we put, um, we know, know in the line of Christ. When Christ receive, we we place um Christ, Christ receiving the Holy Ghost here. This is when he's baptized, the cross, and then 34 A.D. shut door at the end. Okay, continuing on. Now, Peter comments, comments as well. He says, says the same thing as well. We go to 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 20 to 22. May I read it for these texts, please? <clears throat> Amen. So they escaped the pollution of the world, the Sunday law. <clears throat> but they turned back to their vomit at the midnight cry. They begin the, the spirit, but then end in the flesh. And the last day of the man is worse than the first. So these things we, we know, we've placed things um, previously. But now, <clears throat> and it says, we read in Hebrews 6, verse 4, it says, and have tasted the heavenly gift. So we'll look at this heavenly gift. Just put, um, we'll read Acts 8, verse 18. It says, and when Simon saw that through laying, laying on, on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given. He offered them money. 
we go to verse 20 and we we'll just read the, the second yeah the, the the last half of the text says because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money so now we've seen that this this that this heavenly gift is the is is what the Holy Ghost the Holy Spirit so they have been so they have been partakers of the Holy Ghost um going back to what Paul said in Hebrews 6 you have tasted of this heavenly gift were and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost so they made they received this first birth but but then we'll see that later on they rejected as as we have seen previously as well and Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Of the sock. Amen. Um, Acts ten forty five, and I, I believe um, this is, I think Peter wrote this, but it says, also was poured out out the gift of the Holy Ghost. So this heavenly gift is the Holy Ghost, is the Holy Spirit. And Christ sends this power here so that so that when we come up here, we, we we might not reject Christ. And this is to escape the pollutions of the world, to put away sins, to walk truly in the way of righteousness. So um it says it says, For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth. So now let's go under the heading, Perfect Law of Liberty. Psalms 19, verse 12 and 13 says, Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from what? Secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have, have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and, and I, I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Okay, so David is showing showing the these secret faults of these errors in which in which we do not know and this comes up here at the midnight cry have these hidden hidden sins put revealed rather have these hidden sins revealed so that so that we might be innocent of the great transgression. Go ahead, Quentin. Hey, amen. Yes, it is. Amen. From the sin where, where, from the sin where, which, which can't be, um, yeah, forgiven. Amen. Okay. So when we come, when when this light shines shines on us, we um, all of our secret faults are revealed. And what shows faults? Yes. Okay. But the law. Thank you. Yes, the law. James chapter one verse twenty five. But, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he he excuse me he being not a a a for a man hearer but a doer of of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. So this so the law comes and and this mirror reveals 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 our sin. <clears throat> And it says, it says, and continueth therein. So when this law comes and it shows our sin, we have to continue in this perfect law of liberty. Because now we are freed from our sins if we um, confess our sins, just as Isaiah, Job, as Daniel, and so forth. John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. May I have a reader for these two texts, please? Amen. So this perfect law comes. Men I cry. Mm 
You have to continue in it. And then when you continue in it, then you are Christ's disciples. And and this is shown by turning away from these hidden sins or these secret faults or these errors, all these things, so that you so that you shall be innocent from the great transgression. Um may I read it for the next quote, Desire Ages two fifty eight, paragraph five. Amen. So now we know this, this, this test comes to see if there's any real what? Faith in the promises of God. And it says, through faith in these promises, every man may be delivered from the snares of error and the control of sin. This, that is a promise in itself, saying that if you cling to what Christ says here, you shall be delivered from, from these sins. Okay, so now we look at two witnesses for this great transgression so we look at genesis 39 verse 9 with joseph and and his master's wife and i'm not going to read the whole thing because this is something we we don't know i believe and she she tried to get him to lie with her and then and then he He says this in verse verse nine. It says, "How then? How then? Excuse me. How then? How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? So this great sin is is what in in this time. It was adultery. Okay, so this was literal adultery. But now we can go to Exodus thirty-two, verse." 30 and 31, when Moses rebukes Aaron and it says, it says, ye have sinned a great sin. Verse 31, it says, oh, oh, this people have sinned a great sin and, and, and have made them gods of gold. So now what, so now is this, so yes, it's spiritual adultery now. So, so this great transgression the midnight cry that the Lord wants us to be innocent of is this spiritual adultery, which is the raising up of this idol, is falling into this idol worship as, as men have done many times in the past. But we know when this light comes at midway, if you receive this foot washing, when you come to the point of the midnight cry, you will do the very same work. You will humble yourself because you have humbled yourselves here, here as well. So you just you do the same work again, humble and humble yourself. Okay. May I read it for Signs of the Times, February 19th, 1894, paragraph 7, looking at this, the great transgression and the form of godliness. Jesus Christ. They must have the form of religion that has 
the least requirement of spirituality and self-denial, and as its unsanctified human wisdom cannot, will not lead them to low folkery, they are naturally drawn towards the vision and, no and doctrines. They do not want to walk in the ways of the Lord. They are altogether too much enlightened to seek God prayerfully and humbly with an intelligent knowledge of his word. Not caring to know the ways of the Lord, their minds are open to open delusions, are all open to delusions, all ready to accept and believe a lie. They are willing to have the most unreasonable, most inconsistent falsehoods palmed off upon them as truth. Amen. So, popery, she said, is a religion of the human nature, and people must have some form of religion. So, popery is this form of godliness but denying the power thereof. So this is this, this form of godliness is this great transgression because you will be directly in line with, with the Pope, both in type and in the anti-type in this line as well. Because they, because they rise up in pride and turn away from the standard of righteousness, the Ten Commandments, which is the perfect law of liberty. So they're back bound and enchained and Christ says, I, I believe in, in John, he says that he who commits sin is the servant of sin. So if you rise up in this and do this great sin, you are now this servant of sin. You are a, a servant and a slave to Satan now. You're in bondage. Amen. It says Ma Satan's masterpiece of deception is popery. So this is what Satan wants to bring about this masterpiece and this is what we are all in danger of because this is speaking about this 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 group those those who know these truths that that satan is trying to get us to bow down to to this power to have the pope within our hearts may i read it for next yeah the next paragraph paragraph eight satan's masterpiece of deception is popery Amen. So now, Protestants are following in this same line. And and we'll see as we go on with, amen. It's a time of darkness, she works, but, but in a time of um, great light as well, she works. And she brings about the same end of men coming to worship, worship her, the mass, Satan's masterpiece of deception. Okay. So now, switch gears a little bit. Go. We're going to look at old and new type and anti-type. Because this is where, um, this is what we'll see here, where men will turn from Christ because they do not receive the new. Because it happened in the time of Christ. When, when, when Christ came, the Jews thought that Christ was fighting against Moses and, and, um, and all 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 of the laws but not seeing that christ is the law giver himself there they see the old and the tights but they do not do not see the new and add type so we are in the same thing we are in the same same boat that we we must see the the new and the anti-type or else we'll do the same thing that the jews of old did go and put christ upon the cross romans chapter 6 verse 3 to 5 <clears throat> May I read it for these, please? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized unto Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by, by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. 
For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. So, <clears throat> so we know that the cross is this baptismal blood. And it says that, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. So now when you, when you put yourself upon this cross, when you humble yourself, this is now this seed being planted. It's a parallel to the seed being planted at the Sunday law as well. We, where, where now the sower comes and sows the seed. But now, but now this is showing that this seed, seed here being planted, is, is you putting yourself upon the cross, humbling yourself, and and following the same plan that Christ, um, Christ laid. It says, and that we we shall also rise in his likeness as well. At the end, it says, verse 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. And we just said previously that he who committed sin is a servant of sin. So therefore you are no longer in bondage to sin. So I'll say from the Son of Law to the midnight cry, we have this old man. Amen. This cruel and proud oppressor. This is all in your own heart. This is the, this is the Pope because she says popery is a religion of human nature, and we all have this human nature. So now, um, and this old man comes up here, and he's crucified. And and then from this point on, it's supposed to continue therein. And Paul says that henceforth we should not serve sin, and that and that is how you continue therein in the law. Verse seven: For he that is dead is freed from sin. So you're freed from sin at the midnight cry. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we, we what? Believe that, that we shall also live, live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised, ra raised, raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. And we must continue into, in this whole process. Amen. The power is that you shall not be a servant of sin and take it up again. Amen. So you have to continue therein so that you, you can truly be Christ's disciples. And is a, a quote that's, um, is a quote that she, she states, it's a rebuking quote that we are truly not disciples of Christ now. The only time you are truly a, a true disciple of Christ is when Christ is within your heart. The fullness of Christ is in your heart. Right now, we, we have the, the, um, the seal of promise, but, but that promise can be broken if you break, break that promise. Because another promise is from Steps of Christ. She says that Christ's promises cannot fail, and they will not fail. So Christ will keep his promise, but it's up to us to keep, keep, keep that same covenant or vow or promise that we had with Christ. So, um, okay, yes. So now this old man dies right here, midnight cry, and you're brought into this newness of life. So so from so from this time onward, it's all about now the new man. Okay? Because now this seed is planted here, just as the seed was planted in the in the beginning. The seed planted is this death here. Next paragraphs. COL 127.4, <clears throat> it says, hold on. in every age, there is a new development of truth, a message of God to the people of, ja of that generation. The old truths are all essential. New truth is not independent of the old, but an unfolding of it. It is only as the old truths are, are what? Understood that, that we can comprehend the new. So if any man comes up at this point and then rejects th this message, it shows that they had not understood the old because the old and the new is one and the same. The law and the gospel is one and the same. She says that the law is, is, the, is the trunk or the, yeah, the, the, the law is the trunk and the gospel is the fruitful blossom. So there is, is the same, same plant. It says, when Christ, what? Desire to open 
to his disciples the truth of his amen he began at Moses and all the prophets and expounded unto them in all <clears throat> the scriptures the things concerning himself Luke 24 verse 27 and we know that just as Swinton said previously he gives Moses and all the prophets it's all instruction Amen. The death. Amen. Resurrect. So now, amen. So now we're showing yourself that, that if you come up to this point and you die to self, you know that you'll be brought into newness of life and you'll be living, living in Christ. So this time here, this little time of peace is very important and we must receive this foot washing and the light that comes here because what's um if we receive it it will show show forth if you received it here it amen and it prepares you for your burial if you reject it it shows that you have rejected it right here all these things shall be manifest the fire shall show um shall show what manner of foundation you have built upon basically paul says continue on but it is the light which which shines in the fresh unfolding of truth that glorifies the old. He who rejects or neglects the new does not really possess the old. For him, it loses is its what? Vital power and becomes but a lifeless what? Form. So this is what Paul is speaking about. Those, um, let me say it correctly, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Those who... Come up, coming to this point, and only have the form. It is, it is, it is because they had not understood the old, and they're rejecting the new. And but in their minds, when they reject this new, because they they see this new as something that is dangerous. But 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 when they reject and fight this new, they're also rejecting the old. So they're throwing away everything. Okay. So yeah, for him it loses its vital power and becomes but a lifeless form. And there's a development of truth from the Son of Law to the Midnight Cry, and there's a development of truth from the Midnight Cry onward as well. You have to receive both. You have to receive both old and new. I'm not saying to reject the old, but the old only points you to the, the fullness of it. For this is a, this is a type, and it's bringing you down to the anti-type. And this is what this was the problem with, with the Jews as well. Because they saw all the old. They saw what Moses and all the prophets were saying. They saw, they saw the lamb, the bullock, and all these things. And they held on, held on to the old. But now when Christ came, the true bullock, the true lamb, the blood, the meat offering, the sin offering, all these things, they ended up rejecting Christ. So they had the lifeless form, but they denied the power. Okay. So now, then she quotes on this. In COL 34, paragraph 4, Christ's mission was not understood by the people of his time. The manner, the manner of his coming was not in accordance with their expectations. So this second sentence that we just read is very important because that means at that time, men, men had, had, had in their own minds a means and a way of how, how Christ, could, Christ should come. So therefore, in this time, Men have in their minds, we have in our minds, a certain way of how truth should come. And we must be fearful and of that and guard, guard against that. And we should be open, open to hear um, Christ's voice. She has a quote, she says that the soul's voice should be quiet so that we can hear the voice of God. Once the, when the soul's voice is quiet, we can clearly hear the voice of God. Jump down and, and then... Um, and then, and then she says that the, the Jews hold on to the traditions, maxims, and enactments of men, and, yeah, and, and, and all these things. And it hid, hid, hid from them the lessons which Christ, which God intended to convey. Just down to the next bold in the middle. And when the reality came, in the person of Christ, they, they, they did not what recognize in him the fulfillment of all their types, the substance of all their shadows. They rejected the anti-type. And clung to their to their type, types and useless ceremonies. 
So they clung to this old. They have the form because all these old truths um, gives you th this form because um, it seems like you are in, 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 in the, the truth because you're saying the same thing, you're eating the same thing, you're doing all these same things. But now when the test truly comes to see if you're really in this church, it will reveal um, if you're actually in this church or not. Because Christ will send light, not not in line with men's expectations, and we'll see how men will respond to it. Last bold, not by force of arms, not by violent, violent. Amen. Was the was the kingdom of God to to prevail, but by the implanting of a new principle in the hearts of men. So the kingdom of God prevails when this new principle is in the hearts of men. And I'll put forth that this new principle is given at the in that cry. Because this is the new that men do not want to receive. They see they see all the old, old rules and all the old, old things. But when this new rule comes, men rise up against this. <clears throat> And we just saw in Romans 6, 5, that this seed is planted. And, and then and she tells us, because this, this is speaking of, this chapter is talking about Matthew 13, the seed, the seed, the seed and the sower. And it says, by the implanting, so the seed is being planted, of a new principle in the hearts of men. 1 MR 58, paragraph 1, says, after the passing of time, God in Excuse me. Entrusted to his faithful followers the precious principles of present truth. After when? The passing of time. And the passing of time was when? Okay, and we know that we place we placed October twenty second here at the midnight cry to show the investigative judgment of the living. So after the passing of time, God entrusts Trust the, the principle, the precious principles of present truth. Is this this is the seed. It says these um Ken's actually I would like someone to finish off this text, please. <clears throat> these, these principles were not given to those who had no part in the giving of the first and second angels' messages. They were given to the workers who had had a part in the from the beginning. Amen. So when this when this rule is given, it is it is to those who have taken apart from the beginning and had not turned. You know the beginning is the Sunday law. And they receive the Lord sends down the, the principles, the precious principles of present truth. So now coming to a close. Bring this down to our time a little more. It's just show, um, we'll look at some times when men turned, turned from the old, turned, turn, turned from the new, and held, held on to the old. May I read it for Red Ryan two forty one point two. Amen. So this exceedingly bright light comes, and we went over it um, time, times before, and this is the midnight cry message. And now, when this light comes, 
um, men reject this light. Um, next paragraph, 242.1. Uh, can I read it for the bolds only, please? Amen. So, when this exceedingly bright light comes, there are the ministers and leaders who, who, who keep men in 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 sin, and and turn them from this new new light. And they say, God is with with us. We have the truth with us. And what truth would they be speaking of? The the old. Because in their mind, when this new light comes, it is fighting the old and it's something dangerous and they must brace themselves against it. So, amen. So, this is more so speaking of those in this, in this message now. Because we know in Matthew uh, 24 with the they and with the, yeah, amen, that many are, are offended when their shepherds are smitten, basically. So now, so so now many will turn. Um, when, when this light comes as well, both, both of the shepherds and, and the sheep and the flock as well. <clears throat> and and we and we had an illustration of this back in twenty. Um, 16 as well, because the light that the Lord sent in 2014 was, was, it, was the, the reform lines, a uh, better understanding of the reform lines, I should say, and the binding off. But then, when 2016 came, men rose up against the same light that, that, that God, has, God, God has sent and said that, and said that this light is darkness, and they they themselves said that God is with with us. We have the truth with us, turning men from 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 the new, and they held on to their to the old the the old um the old useless types, and saying that saying that um saying that the day of the Lord is is where nine eleven, and they placing all these things in the in the wrong wrong places, and showing that. And, and, and showing and putting up wrong signposts, so to say. So now, just as we've seen then, we will, we will see at the midnight cry as well. When Christ sends this new light, um, many will, will, will turn, up, turn against it because it comes in an unexpected manner. And this is what she says, if you will read, she speaks about Eli and Samuel. The Lord raised up Samuel to go and rebuke Eli because it was an unexpected manner. And, and the old man, Eli, had to accept the new man, Samuel. And Samuel was to find Christ. He was prophet, priest, and judge. Christ is his prophet, priest, and king. So just as it was with the Jews as well, rejected the old, I mean, accepted the old, but then rejected the new, the, the reality of the types. Amen. Yes. Christ. Amen. Amen. So when you fight this new, it's, you're really just fighting everything at the same time. Amen. You have the form. You have these old things. You look, you look like as a priest. You have, have the ephod and the linen coat. You're doing the sacrifices. You look, you look like you're following God, but you're truly not. Just, just like the Protestants in the world. They look like they're following God, but they're truly not. And so in this, so in, in, in each stage, and it will come down to, those in this message. Last quote, 13 Amar, 334, paragraph 
paragraph two. Another angel was, was, was to come from heaven with a message, and the whole earth was, was, was to be lightened with his glory. It would be impossible for us to state just just how this additional light would come. It might come in a very unexpected manner, in a way that would not agree with the ideas that many have conceived. It is not at all unlikely or contrary to the ways and works of God to send light to his people in unexpected ways. So this is a warning to us that God is sending that we must not harden our hearts against any new light. And if anything comes in, Sister White says, we have our Bibles. And Isaiah 820 says, to the law and to the testimony. This is how we test all doctrines. It doesn't matter what man, what whoever it may be, test it by the word of God, the word of God only. Because it is not contrary to the ways and works of God to send light to his people in unexpected ways. The Lord rebuked Balaam by an ass. So, so we have witnesses of this. So this is a, we know, this is clear showing, clearly shown us that this exact thing will come at the midnight cry. Even prior, midway, the Lord is going to rebuke us. We've seen at the foot washing. He, he's, he's rebuking us, but it's for our benefit. And, and um, Christ comes here and trying to, sh and he's, it's actually showing us that he's here to protect, comfort, and the third thing, but I can't remember at this time. So anytime the Lord sends light, it is showing, and every, every time he sends light, it's a rebuke to our old errors and false, false ways. And, and, and we should respond by humbling ourselves and going straight to the word of God and asking him for light upon these things so that we might understand. So... Shall we close with a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for all that, all that you have shown us and, and for all the light. Father, please, we ask you may create us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. Help us, Father, not, not to lift self up, but to humble self in, in your sight, Lord. And Lord, when light comes, please help us to plead and to search, search your word to see what, what you have said, O oh Lord. And we ask all these things in Christ's name we pray. Amen.